Hello and welcome to Painting Lesson 1 of TAN. I'm Krista, founder of K-Music and Design and the voice of the hands creating in this video today. We'll be creating a bouquet of flowers out of watercolor paint on watercolor paper. Let's start off by choosing any color. I've decided to choose a nice red and I'll be using the palette of reds, pinks, greens, or yellows. Starting off with creating a few spots for the beginning of our leaves in a few different sections. While choosing the spots, think about how big of a bouquet you would like to create. Is it the whole page? Are we going as high as the page? Left to right? How far do your flowers go down? Do they go all the way down to the bottom of the page? Are we creating space for stems of bots, just like in this video? Continue to add water to your watercolor paints. And with this water on your brush, let's spread out the dots that you've created to create little petals. Combining the dots to create larger petals is your choice. I would suggest having a flat surface to create on. Some of our petals' value can be nice and light or it can be dark. We can always change this later on. You're welcome to create spiky petals, rounded petals, more of a square petal if you would like. Mine are turning out to be nice and spiky. Coming back, I have decided I like the value of those specific petals to be a little bit darker and darker on the inside or the center of the flower petals. And here's the second color I've added, still in the family of the reds, a bit more of a purpley color. Expanding the dots to create petals using lots of water to expand the petals. Varying the size of our flowers and petals with smaller petals, larger petals throughout the whole bouquet. Coming up to the last petal, 
you're always welcome to pause the video and complete your petals that you would like before continuing on to the next colors in the next part of the video. I've added some more pigment, some more color in there, especially in the middle sections of the flower. And I'm adding a nice light pink for a little bit more of a contrast. I'm staying to the same color palette in this red family. Just be adding the dots to start the petals, really spreading around where the sections are of the red, the little bit lighter red, more purpley, and the pink sections giving the bouquet a lot of variety throughout. And always keeping in mind how large the bouquet would like to be, how long the stems or the vase will be, keeping space at the bottom of the page to add in a vase or stems, possibly a bow tie if you would like. Adding the water to the paintbrush and expanding those dots to create nice and spiky flowers. Or rounded ones if you would prefer. If there's a flower or petal nice and close to a lighter petal, or petal that you are placing down now, just like I'm doing here, but there is a petal, or flower right next to it, make sure to stay away from that first flower so that we can add some depth. This pink flower is behind the darker reds. And if the flowers blend together from the water placement, that's alright, it adds something cool. Continuing to add extra pigment to the inside of the flower, the center of the petals, and I'm deciding to switch off the colors just a little bit, but stay, still staying in that nice light color, or light value as well, adding in some yellow to add even more contrast in color. Again, keeping in mind where the stem, the vase, and where the petals of the bouquet will be. Making sure to keep enough space for anything I would like to add in, as well as leaves coming in shortly. Making sure we always have water to help us expand those petal dots to create our beautiful petals. And we can choose to have our colors right next up to each other or having some space, some white space in between. The closer the petals are, the fuller your bouquet will be. And if we feel like it's not full enough, we can always add in some more later on, as well as leaves. Making sure my brush is 
washed off from the previous color as best as I can. We can always use a napkin or a rag or a paper towel of sorts to make sure all of that color is fully off. And if your water gets a little bit too murky, we can always switch it off. Adding in our vase, I have decided to create a nice dark vase still in the same color palette as a red. Added a little bit of blue to create the purple. It's my pre-selected purple of my color palette that I have available to me today during the recording of this video. And what we're going to do is make an outline of the vase. I have decided to create a rounded vase. You're more than welcome to create a square or possibly rectangular vase, depending on the space that you have available on your page. If you would like, you can always skip this part or create stems. And I won't be completely covering the whole vase. To create that glass transparent feel, I'll be spreading out the paint, making that nice outline and then spreading it out. At this point, you can use as much or as little water as you would like, as long as it, we're not overflowing the page with water and spreading it around. This water can always be taken off before it dries. And there's that big chunk right there. I'm going to be taking it off, making sure I have a nice clean brush. If I have a dry brush, the more water it will pick up. Similar to paper towel, which can always be used as well. Next, to add lots of contrast, I'm going to be adding in some dark green leaves and some stems. Adding in those stems first. Coming between the flowers, behind the flower petals. Having some peeking out from the sides. And here comes the leaves. Curved leaves with a nice little point at the end. A nice little technique for leaves, if we push down on our paintbrush, it will expand and create that nice curve in the leaf. And then lifting up for the pointy area of the leaf. Finding open spaces in your bouquet to create the leaves. There's the point and there's a push down and lift up to create that point technique there. Expanding the leaf a little bit more, or the leaf of the petals a little bit more to get rid of that space in my bouquet. I've also decided to darken some of the petals as well. Here's the touchy part. So now that the vase is a little bit 
dry but not too dry we still have a little bit of movement around that we can use with the paint and the water i'm going to add a bit of a shadow i had a lot of paint or watercolor paint that i'm going to brush around there i can also take it away with a nice drier brush while we're creating this shadow this nice little glimmer at the bottom there reflection depending on what we're sitting on thinking about my vase specifically is curved nice rounded vase making sure the shadow or reflection beneath is also curved if you have decided to create either a square vase or a rectangular vase perhaps making sure our shadow is also more square or more rectangular compared to circular you're going adding in as many petals as you would like as many leaves and stems to fill up your bouquet as much as you would like if you've decided to have stems instead of a vase adding those stems as long as you would like and possibly adding a bow tie if you would like to add a bow tie make sure you put in the bow tie first so that these stems can show above and below that bow tie and then of course at the end of all of our creations adding in your name or signature and the year or if you would like the specific date that you have created your creation on and there we have the bouquet of flowers in a vase Put that one off to the side for now and I do like to create sometimes on top of another piece of paper or another piece of waxy paper just in case I spill you'll see in the coming videos between lesson one and ten that I have become lots more confident or just kind of stopped caring about the creations that may happen on the table by accident. But just in case, you can always have a piece of paper underneath to catch those flyaway creation splotches. So now we're going to be creating another flower picture. This one is of a sunflower. Here's the, bit, the middle of the sunflower. I, start, I have started with a yellow middle, adding a few little dots creating in the middle. So these are the sunflower seeds growing. Next, adding in the petals. Bit larger dots from before in our bouquet of flowers. I have decided to use an orangey color. Getting lots of water on that paintbrush and expanding our petals. Closer the petals are together, the fuller the flower will look. This one is a very full flower I'm creating here. All of the petals are mixing together. more so of a sunflower inspired flower. I do like to create little spiky flowers with this technique. For 
For this painting, we'll be adding a few other flowers as well, but having this first flower as our main focus. This is the largest flower that I'm going to be creating for this picture, this painting. As well, I have decided there will be a vase at the bottom, making sure to add enough space or leave enough space for the vase or possibly stems if you would like to create the stems or a little bit of both. stem and a few fancy leaves coming in long stems many many stems I'm using a lot more of the page in this one here a little bit later on we will still be able to see those stems. Let's create the stems quite far still, leaving a little bit of room at the bottom for the bottom of the vase. Here comes the next flower petal creations. Oh no, I forgot my own process. As the video is creating, I'm doing the voiceover after the video has been created. Here comes the vase. I am creating more of a square rectangular vase. A little bit rounded edges there. Here is the next petals, or next little flowers. Almost like baby's breath idea. Coming in and filling where I created these stems. Thinking about the space around the creations, we have a nice large flower in one section, so we're adding in some variation with smaller flowers. Following a lot of the stem lines that I have previously created, Up the page. Cleaning off my brush in the water, you can always throw out the muggy water and have a fresh start some clear water. Here's some variation in color and a little bit of variation in plant leaf. Still keeping it nice and small as my focus point is that large flower in the middle. This yellow section, the small petals or the small little dots there are closer together compared to being further apart as the more purpley pinkish flowers are at the bottom. And let's see if at the end of the video I can quite remember if I have darkened the larger flower so that it is nice and strong to be seen 
as a focal point. And at any time, if we feel like we would like to have more stems to fill out the vase a little bit more, we can always add more stems of flowers is making sure that we don't overload our senses, our visual senses, with too many different options. I would say a maximum of about five different variations of plant life if you would like. This particular vase, I have three at the moment. And, and adding in a little bit of leaves to fill out the vase, fill out the space, cover up some of that white spot. Adding some petals within the vase, careful that you stay within the confinement of the vase space. And adding in some more leaves to fill out the space. Oops, looks like we need this one a little bit darker, possibly. We're running out of paint. There we go. I'm still thinking that focus area is our largest flower with some accompaniment flowers filling out the space. I'm really washing off that brush. Here we go, getting that nice darkened focal point. Expanding my petals a little bit more to add in some space or fill up some space. some more stems, possibly some more flowers if you have room on your, your paper, your page. Adding a little bit of shadow to the vase here. Vaughn. 
embossed in the boa, still keeping the transparency. So that we can see through the vase and to the stem and adding the back of the vase as well now that I know how many stems. Starting nice and dark on that left side, I'm pretending that the light is coming in from the top right of my page. Darkening the top of the vase show that difference there between the vase and the, the top lip of the vase. And there's our nice little shadow or reflection coming in at the bottom, pulling in some of the blues. Keeping in mind with that shadow at the bottom there, I have a rectangular or squared off vase to keeping that shadow in the same dimensions. Dimensions and shape of the vase with that shadow there. Adding in the back lines of the vase, staying away from the stems, keeping the stems nice and full looking. And adding as many petals as we feel until our creation feels complete. Here's a one, two, three, four, a fourth type of flower. Slightly different, slightly bigger. trying our best to stay below around five flower types. We want our vase to feel full, but not crowded. These petals are drooping down a little bit. nice difference between all of our flowers. In this specific piece, I have decided to keep the more purpley flowers at the base closer to the vase and getting a little bit lighter tone into that pink and even lighter at the top. Seeing that contrast of color from the top to the bottom. And having a nice fuller bottom area of the bouquet. And a little bit less busy up at the top. And as always, signing our names and the date. There's multiple places to put our names and the date. I like to go in the bottom corners. 
for a lot of my paintings or tilting my signature on the side of the vase. And there we have it, lesson number one of painting. We have created two vases. I would love to see your creations over on social medias. Make sure you take K Music and Design and cleaning up our workspace. Thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you in lesson number two.